There is a new Galvo laser on the block and it is the Atomstack Atelier Galvo laser engraver. This is a brand new one that's been released by Atomstack. As you guys know, I have reviewed their products in the past, so I know their products well. I'm gonna be putting this machine through its full paces. I'm gonna be giving it a full suite of testing, full materials, everything. So if you are interested or if you just like to learn a little bit something else about a new laser, stick with us and I'll show you everything. Before I get started, I did just want to disclose to you guys, this was sent to me by Atomstack, but they have an absolutely no say in anything that I do say in this video. All of my testing will be neutral, it will be scientific, and I will give you my honest opinion on what I think about this and if it's worth your money. So without further ado, I'm gonna get straight through to the specifications of this machine so you guys can see exactly what it can do. So this is a diode laser only and it is 12 watts. The working area is 120 by 120 millimeters. There's a full range of materials. It can engrave up to 4,000 millimeters a second according to this. The preview speed for framing is also very fast and it has a 0.01 millimeter accuracy. There is a visual positioning camera on it and a high speed outline preview. It is a class one laser as well. It boasts a fully enclosed design, tilt detection, door open detection and a USB safety lock. It's a manual focusing method, 100 millimeter working distance. It can support a rotary chuck, rotary roller, and other things. It's Atomstack Studio or Lightburn. There is Wi Fi as well or USB cable, and it can connect to hotspots. Pricing is early bird sale of $599. Retail is $649 after that. But there is a further 10% off if you use my discount code and affiliate link in the description. Let's take a look at the actual machine. It comes in a gunmetal gray. It has a orange cover around it. As you can see, it's a monolith shape and very reminiscent of the other Galvo lasers out there. So the door is on a hinge, as you can see right there, and it does open outwards, which is quite cool. I haven't seen that before. It also has a removable base plate, which we'll see in a second, and a very sleek, minimal design, really. I love the materials. They feel like good quality. I like that they've included tapped and threaded holes there. That's exactly what you want. It gives that versatility. So we'll move on now to the other aspects of the laser. So we're going to go to the back, and it does have an exhaust outlet. And as you can see there, it has all of the wavelength information. The IO on the back, you've got an on-off switch. You have your power import a USB port to connect to the computer, a USB security token, and this next port is where you plug in the rotary or the extension. This is a manual focus laser, so you have to manually twist it up and down, but it works well, and to be honest with you, it feels absolutely fine. You know, it, to keep the price low, I don't mind that. So there you go, absolutely stunning. We've got a frame repeat button, a start pause button. This also comes with Wi-Fi and it has a status light as well. So you know where you stand based on the colors of it. Really, really nice looking laser. I, I have to say it looks good. So here is the leather strap. It's got a notch cut out to stop it rubbing. A little bit skeptical about this one, but we'll talk about that later. You through the Atomstack Studio software. So this is gonna be a very, very shallow tutorial on how to use it but I just wanna show you what it can do. So initially when you plug your machine in and you turn it on, you're gonna get a connection here and it automatically connects. There is the option to connect via Wi-Fi. I have mine connected via USB just because it's convenient and easy for me to do it. 
If you do plug in the rotary tool or the extender tool, you can select them here. You can customize it. You can turn off door detection and tilt detection. And also all the instructions are available here. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna click on here and we are gonna get our camera set up and we're gonna click on camera G0. And what that will do is that will show us a picture. There are ways to calibrate, but ultimately mine came out of the box absolutely fine. So I don't think you'll need to do that. So once you've got that picture showing up there, then if you come to this top icon area here, you can click take photo and there you go. It literally displays the engraving area right there. And we can now position our item effectively and accurately in this position. So moving from here on the left side, you've got the option to drag the screen around. You can add images in if you want to. Uh, there is a text option and you can obviously type whatever you want in there and select your type of text. And we'll come back to that in a minute. There is a shape, a basic shape bit, also, also a line area. So if you want to draw complex lines, you can do that as well, which is handy when you want to trace around difficult objects. There is this material area and it has, you know, predefined vector images you might find a use from. There is a measure tool. I'm not sure what case is, so I'm not going to go into that. And they've just brought in an AI feature, which I haven't used yet either. Now, going back to the top row, you can take the photo. There's a batch engraving option. There is a preview option for your engraving to see what it'll look like, and then you can position your item. So let's take something. Let's come straight in with one of these images here. Let's go for an animal, and we'll go for a dog. And we're going to position it onto our item there, okay? This is why it's great having a camera. You can do that. Then over here on the right, if you click on manual parameters, there is a built-in material library. And in this case, we're going to go with leather, and it gives you what it determines as a default settings. You can also specify if you're going to do a line engraving, an, an engrave, aka fill, or a cut. We're going to do fill, and then it changes our settings on the right there, but you can also set the, the directional aspect and how it engraves, which is great. Then what you can do is click on preview and it's gonna give you a rough idea and a time of how it's gonna go. So really, really good, really handy. You can adjust the position in here and you can align it using these bits here. But in a nutshell, that is the software. A really good range of features. It has what you need to get started. You can use Lightburn as well. I'm gonna use this software on this review today. Here we'll take a look at all of the results. I was really impressed with the quality of this laser. I couldn't believe the detail it was getting. And as you can see, a full range of materials looking absolutely brilliant. So now that I've had a chance to run through every aspect of this machine, I have my mind made up. I know exactly what this thing can do and I'm ready to share my thoughts with you all. So the first pro for the Italia is that I really, really love the design of it. I think it's a really slick looking machine. I mean, I love the gunmetal gray. 
I love orange. Anyone who's seen my stuff before knows I'm a big fan of orange. I really, really like how compact it is. It's, it's a perfect size machine and a perfect weight as well because it is very light. If you're gonna take things to trade shows, this is the kind of size you wanna be carrying around. You can pack it in most boxes and you can make sure that it is very, very safe and secure. And then you can just whip it out, put it on the table, do what you need to do, visually strike people with how good it looks and you're good to go. Another really great thing that I like about the Italia is the fact that the laser itself, the quality of the engravings blew me away. And considering the price bracket that this thing is coming in at, and you know the competing lasers that it is competing with, I thought there might be a little bit of a you know a lesser quality in the engraving, but actually it is blowing me away. The quality of the diode laser within this is as good as any of its competitors. Another thing that is absolutely amazing about this, so I love the camera. The, yes, the camera quality wasn't like the most crispest picture, but for the price you're paying and for what you actually need the camera to do, and those things are position your items onto the engraving blanks, it is to get an accurate rough area of placement when you're first engraving something. It does that, it does everything it needs to do. And if you're someone who is new to laser engraving and you just want something to be as easy as possible, then that's what you need, you need a camera. Another thing I love is the safety aspect of this laser. If you are new to laser engraving, and this is pretty much angled at beginners, you know, beginner people that wanna get into lasers, existing makers, but anyone really, and it's for people that wanna take it to trade shows. One thing you want is for safety to be the paramount thing. And what this is, is a class one laser. And what that allows you to do is to take it to most trade shows. You can show that authentication, that certification that it is a safe laser and they should let you use it. But what it also allows you to do is use it at home in an office environment, in another environment. And you can literally put your item in there. You can engrave it and you're not gonna get any damaging lights in your eyes. You're not gonna get any radiation from it. You've got all those safety aspects covered. It also has a tilt mechanism. So if you accidentally knock it over, if someone comes in and knocks it, you can't accidentally knock it over, we'll open the door and have the lights come on, which is great. Another thing that I'm really happy Atomstack brought in with this laser is you have the option to do bi-directional engraving and also unidirectional engraving. And that allows a lot of versatility. So with bi-directional engraving, you can get much more detail. It allows the laser to go in more than one direction and it can get those fine details. With unidirectional engraving, it means you can just kind of do left to right, much quicker engraving. So you can determine if you want detailed or fast engravings and having that option to change between the two allows you to ultimately define how you engrave. And that is always a nice thing as a user to have that option to do that. I was really impressed with the speed of this laser as well. I mean, it boasts up to 4,000 millimeters a second and that is what its rivals or the, the lasers that it's competing against, that is what they also boast. And this was a fast laser. I, I managed to engrave lots of things really clearly and it was great. So we've discussed the great things about this laser. Now we'll discuss the not so great. And I'm not saying these are deal breakers. These are just things that I see as improvements and I always like to highlight them just in case anyone has a unique user case or if Atomstack are actually watching it and they wanna try and improve their products, it might also help them. So I love the fact that the door can be opened and it is actually a biomechanical door. So you can, act, it, you know, it's got a bit of versatility there and that's great however if you want to engrave on using the blue laser which is obviously the bright blue laser if you want to engrave on something that is a little bit thick or a little bit bigger than the build space you can't just put it in there and close a lid down on it and then block out the light and because of the door being open and closed like this it means if if your item is bigger than the workspace you're forced to actually take the base plate off lift the machine up and put it underneath it that's all good but if your if your item isn't particularly sized to have something sat on it or it's a bit of an obscure size it means the laser could be a bit wobbly so i like the door i like the fact that it adds that safety mechanism but the problem with it opening outwards and not up and down is it does limit exactly what you can engrave within that area so you heard me say really good things about the design and the pros and they are they still stand 100 percent there is only one aspect of the design that I see as a con, and I personally would like something different. And this is once again a personal choice, but the IO on the back of it, all of your power accessories, all there, 
they're at the top of the unit. So it means when you've got your power cable, when you've got your USB cable in, they're dangling down like this. When you've got a workspace or if you've got a limited workspace or you've got the extraction hose coming out the back of it like that, I personally don't like having stuff dangling down. It can get snagged, it can get pulled, it can get caught up. I, I personally, I mean, some things are switching that at the top absolutely fine. I personally would like to see this located a little bit lower down or somewhere where it's not gonna get snagged because there is a lot coming out the back. But that's such a minor thing and it's not something that's going to limit you in any way. Another thing that I think is a little bit for me, you know, temperamental as to whether or not I like it or not is the carrying strap on the top. So it's a leather strap. I showed you that earlier in the video and it has a rotational aspect. It has little notches cut out so it doesn't catch on the edge of the machine. But for me personally, if I'm paying however much money I've spent on this, I want to know that if I'm carrying that machine around, it is entirely safe. And I'm sure this has been tested. It would have been tested. However, the fact that it's leather and it is still rubbing against fairly right angled surfaces, I would always have a bit of a worry in the back of my head that that could snap whilst I'm carrying it. You can solve that by carrying it like this, but that is something where I would like it to be a bit more rigid, a bit more solid. That being said, it's not a deal breaker. I've been carrying it around with it and it hasn't given me any issues. I just, as somebody designs things, that's something that is just in the back of my head and I just want to let you guys know about it. So you've heard the pros and cons. Now I'm gonna tell you if I would recommend it. But before I do that, I'm gonna tell you who I think this laser is best suited for. So in my opinion, this laser is really well suited for any beginners because it is really easy to use. It's really easy to operate, a really simple um, user interface on it. Also, I would say it is for craft show people, trade show people. If you wanna to go to trade shows, craft fairs, or pop-up stands somewhere and do on-site engraving, this is a really great laser for you. If you've got yourself a shop where you like doing woodwork and you wanna mark your things up or you wanna do other things, it's also great for that. It's a really versatile machine and I think actually, it can be suitable to so many situations. If you've got limited space like I do, I've got a small office here, it's perfect for that. It doesn't take up much room whatsoever. So for me, it's really dynamic and it can be used by so many different people that I think Atomstack have done a great job in that sense. So would I recommend the Atomstack Atelier? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, and hopefully my answer is gonna be better than my French because I'm sure I've been saying that wrong the whole way through this. So yes, I would recommend this laser. I am actually blown away. If the price point stays where it is at the moment, what it displays on the Kickstarter, then I think this is a great bargain. This is actually a really, really brilliant entry level into the laser industry. Yes, this is only a diode laser. It doesn't come with an infrared laser, which the others offer. However, not everyone needs an infrared. And if you just wanna be able to do words, levers, you know, tumblers, stainless steel, all of those things, this can do it. Yeah, the only thing you can't do if you haven't got an IR laser is the crisper metal engravings or the plastics or those kind of things. If that's not what you're after, then it's not a problem. It's, it's great for someone who doesn't wanna invest an arm and a leg in terms of equipment. If you don't know if it's for you, if you don't know if you're gonna be into laser engraving or if you've got what it takes, then this is the perfect introductory into that. I think that actually, this is gonna really, really open some eyes and it's gonna make the other big companies open their eyes because you've got a company bringing in something that they offer with additional features that they don't offer for half the price. And that is a bit of a wave in the industry and it's really, really great to see that. So thank you so much for watching today. I hope this has helped you. I hope it's helped you make a decision and determine what you're gonna do. I'm always answering any questions in the comments section, so feel free to ask any you've got. I've really used this, I've really put it through paces, so I've got a real good bit of experience, so hopefully I can help you make your decision. I do wanna say there is an affiliate link in the description where the channel does get a very small percentage to support it, so if you are gonna buy one and you wanna go through that to help support the channel, it's really, really greatly appreciated, and I wanna thank you in advance for doing that. But once again, thank you so much for watching. If this is your kind of content and you love laser engravers, you love 3D printing, you just love tech in general, or you love me, then please consider subscribing to the channel. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you for watching and have an absolutely wonderful day.